Attacking the king is one of the things that make us play chess. It is nice to attack the king. Today we're gonna see a video with a 14 year old who just crashes through the barricades and uh, more or less mates uh, the experience of very strong Grandmaster Vladimir Ivich that by the way seems to have stalled in his development. He, we thought he would be a 2700 player. It, does not seem to be the case. Anyway, uh, we're gonna learn a little bit of attacking techniques, how to think about attacking and what to look for. And uh, also maybe a little tips on uh, how to defend, what to look for when you're defending against pieces coming your way. We are at the World Cup in Baku in Azerbaijan and it's uh, it's gonna be a great tournament. I I will have a lot of uh, videos from there. Uh, well, I'm not there actually. I'm of course I'm I'm home, uh, but uh, I would have liked to be there. It would be nice. Uh, there, 14 year old it is Gurel it is it is Gurel uh, is white and uh, he's got 2500 rating, so he can play chess. When you see a 14 year old with 2500, you should take him seriously. He probably pack some punch. Anyway, we have uh, E4, E5 opening, and this is the Rai Lopez. Uh, I hope I'm spelling correctly. Uh, all the Spanish opening, and this is the standard way, and Knight F6, castle, and it's the open Spanish. Uh, this is it leads to to very different play from uh, when black goes uh, bishop e7, which is clearly the main line in in this situation. Uh, after knight takes e4, we will have an sort of semi-opened uh, pawn structure that is uh, is strategically unbalanced and uh, and it's kind of not so easy to play. D4. Bishop e7. Now, this is not uh, the most common move in, in this situation. Um, I can't remember the name, but I played this line with black. Uh, and after rook e1, I think the idea is actually to go something like uh, like this, but it's with usually with the bishop on a b4. So no, I've not played this before. After rook e1, uh, we will return to, and uh, this looks like an open Spanish where White has played rook e1 and black has put the bishop on e7. In a lot of lines, uh, black would develop the bishop here and uh, bishop rook e1 would look stupid, but now it's, it will just waste the tempo. At the moment, white is threatening this pawn, so black has to defend it here and c3, uh, making sure you can develop this one and taking over control over this square is, is all uh, very nice. Castle is also a common move here. And knight d7, d2. Black has to, uh, white has to do something about this knight that is a little bit annoying. Uh, how, how the, you can say that the structure here with the pawn here, uh, I keep pushing that pawn. This pawn here and this pawn here. I should not push, push that one. Sorry, not do it again. Um, make sure that white will most of the time have a majority of pawns on the king's side and more space. More space is usually equals attacking chances. When you have more space, you can easier shift uh, your pieces from side to side and start an attack. So this is uh, basically what you want to do when you're attacking. You want to have more space and more pieces and maybe even a pawn majority. If you have a pawn majority, you can push the pawns. You could see that it could be nice for white to push this pawn up in black's face. Uh, at the moment, uh, knight takes d2 is a, is a threat. So black moves the knight, attacks the bishop. Uh, I think if white goes here, then after this move, we have a well-known theoretical position that is more or less balanced. Uh, and uh, this is, is, is a typical um, thing for, for black to, to free his game. Um, instead, uh, white decides to play another move, knight d4. Uh, the idea is to stop the pawn, of course, even though it might lose this one. But taking here does not really look good, especially since this just wins. So if you take there, you have to take on d4 first. Um, and you probably do have to take. And uh, because, well, 
uh, if for instance let's say you go something like like this right then white is already uh, happy here you probably play something like this and after this move you could go back here and we will have pretty cha good chances of uh, bishop knight coming queen coming maybe even rook coming or here um, and this guy can feel very lonely at some point so this is uh, is what you're a little bit afraid of with black so you like to uh, to tick and uh, that makes sense but that leaves this pawn behind which is is a problem and after here if you for instance take here then you risk that white will set up a black squared uh, sort of uh, fortress and and you you will play around this guy even though it looks like a good bishop it should be able to move you can just put your pieces so this cannot do anything then you will probably exchange this one for something we'll make it another color and uh, you will exploit uh, the, the the c file so this is usually even though black has the bishop pair this is not really what you like uh, this is not what you prefer. Uh, you lost uh, permanent control over c5, and uh, and I think we, it's safe to say that white is uh, slightly but clearly better here. So this this is not what you do. Uh, so instead you play here, which looks a little bit strange. But at the moment this bishop that is supposed to be good is also a little bit limited, um, and you do get the bishop pair here with something like this. Uh, this is all uh, very standard. Um, here you have to, of course, worry about something like this. You also have to worry that this rook is suddenly on an active square. It might uh, join some sort of a kingside attack. You're also looking for this, and White would love to play something like this, but of course has to also look out for this move. Um, so anyway, a5 is a natural move. Black's chances are mostly on uh, the, the queen side so he is trying to get space and annoy the bishop and rook here makes also sense getting out of the potential pin here so you can actually move this knight a4 all natural moves here uh, pushing uh, the bishop away you could argue for b4 here um, uh, but I think white will go something like this uh, and, and be ready to, to maybe sacrifice some sort of an exchange at some point here. Uh, this is, uh, is, is interesting. Um, I'm not completely sure what's going on here, but I think uh, in general you have to be very worried about uh, stuff like that. What for, for instance this? At least you can give a perpetual check. Probably, uh, but of course, white probably something like this and and this move and and it will be a draw because this rook can't get back. Uh, by the way, this is something you always have to look out for when you have a bishop here. Oops, I did it again. This bishop here pointing this way. Okay, so maybe maybe b4 would have been smarter. Instead. White, uh, black got ambitious. Uh, he played a3 uh, and and took with the bishop, and that's probably already wrong. Uh, it looks natural to to sort of stop this uh, this stuff from happening here. White is is probably maybe even threatening to take this one, um, and and then if you take back, you can take an h7. But here, black should probably play this, and I think it's it's pretty equal. This position, it's not, uh, it's it's balanced. I think both white and, and black has chances. White should probably take on on c7, and um, and we'll have an interesting fight. Uh, but I don't think black is worse here. Okay, he took with the bishop, and um, and that's more ambitious. But it does take away the bishop's sort of control here. And this actually is important. Uh, th these two bishops here, they are, are strong for defense, uh, controlling vital squares on the H file. So be, be a little bit careful. Okay, so white moved the rook, 
and uh, is, is threatening one pawn here and um, and here black should probably just go back i think here black is probably still okay you take take uh, you might get some slight problems with this one but white also is not completely without um, issues here so this is is but this is clearly asking a lot from the position by the way here a very interesting move for white he, he took on c5 i'm gonna see that but here just to say that okay we when you're playing this kind of game with white and you want to learn to attack the king uh, you want to attack the king uh, what do you do you bring as many pieces as possible towards the king a very interesting idea here could be something like this uh, this looks crazy, um, but after something like this, uh, the idea is, is of course to to swing open here with this and check. And king has to go and rook here. Still, it's probably okay. Black is probably fine after f6 here. This uh, this seems to uh, to to work. You go something like this, uh, like like this, and maybe this here. And this is probably very unclear. Something like this: uh, White, Black will get the the bishop, and uh, and White will have, will have some sort of attack. It's it's very unclear what's going on here. Anybody can win. Um, just notice uh, an important fact here: you can't take this one because if you take you give away, and that's why these bishops are so strong in defense. Now the mate is threatening both here and here and after something like this you just go e6 and it will be mate next move no matter what so this is a typical attacking idea to look out for uh, just sacrificing a bishop and a rook to get open files and go after the king um, this was a very long line um, and uh, probably black is okay if he plays f6 so instead uh, oops, let's, so instead white took on c5 uh, and is probably better here and black uh, I don't know black probably thought he he should win because he thinks he's a much better player he probably is a stronger player but don't underestimate your opponent this is a good idea in chess uh, d4 is clearly uh, asking a really a lot because now the rook is getting this is what uh, Orgard is calling the kill zone we're getting the pieces in in, in close to the king and the more pieces you have there the, the, the better chances you have of, um, of of doing something really serious here black should probably play d3 and and accept that he will probably lose a pawn um, instead he took on c5 look very natural and and this is this is the crucial moment uh, and a very uh, and this is a kind of attack that you should probably able to calculate even uh, if you don't have much rating. So let's t do a little exercise here. We calculate White's attacking ideas. What ideas do we have? We have something like, uh, like this, knight e4. Uh, what happens after this, for instance? This is, um, but after this, it doesn't seem like there's a lot to, to do here. Even something like this, um, it, it looks, good for white but we notice that these bishops keep rooks out of the h file so this is why these bishops are strong in defense okay so that was not a really uh, tempting what about something like like this again uh, probably this move is is just it's just fine uh, and uh, again 94 doesn't bring much but what about if we, we, we see that this bishop sort of get locked out? What about if we take first? And this is what he did. Okay. Uh, so we see here and check. And the king is, of course, forced back. And here comes the point. Queen h6. Uh, threatening mate here in uh, a lot of ways. <laughs> so g6 is forced. And now the knight comes. And it's threatening mate again, or some sort of mating attack. Um, and after bishop e7, black white has a very nice move, uh, rook f3. 
Now, this was probably what uh, uh, Ivic missed, that uh, after rook f3, this is threatening uh, as a very serious threat. Of course, the king is, uh, is, is, is forced, so it has to take here, but and after take back, you cannot cover this square. Oh, no. And what about, um, uh, is there any defense here? Not really, uh, because knight f6 is coming, and, and of course you could try this move, but then white has this move, and notice, this is something good attackers are very good at. Something that good attackers, they see this, that when, when they sacrifice something here, the queen will get access to this square. So after uh, d takes, knight f6, we again have the same problem, and again, white, black has to sacrifice the queen to avoid the mate on uh, g7. Uh, and of course, something like this is, is absolutely hopeless. Uh, well, black will probably be mated pretty quickly. White just has to avoid the back rank mate. Uh, so that is not... And uh, of course, after something like this, white goes back, rook a3. Um, at the moment, black has all these pieces covering um, f6. So he really can't uh, do anything uh, with the pieces and black is, uh, white is threatening this move. Uh, because there's no longer a bishop, so there is a mate here or here. Um, so in this position, uh, Ivic uh, resigned um, and uh, the young uh, Idis Gurel won a beautiful attacking game in the open Rai Lopez. A very nice game, very instructive somehow the way Black's king side fell apart. Uh, if you really want to be a good attacker, you should study these kind of things and really notice, especially these things with the x-ray effect on the f6 square is very important. Um, if you like uh, videos like this and other, usually we are not that much into attack here on GM Talks, it's more like positional considerations, but if you like it, uh, like, subscribe, share, and remember to sign up for the email uh, and get noticed next time we'll have a video out. This was uh, your Grandmaster, your host, Grandmaster Suneberg Hansen from Denmark, uh, coming with a free video to YouTube. Thank you.